Hello there, darlings. Welcome to the Clockwork Cabaret. Oh no, the clowns. The clowns. They are here. Oh wait, never mind. It's just the old biddies. I think I can take them. And now, on with the show. <laughs> I am Emmett Davenport. And I am Lady Ottercop. And it's the countdown to spooky time. It's the Here. countdown to a full moon Saturday Halloween that we are all going to spend inside. And waiting for the zombie apocalypse. I mean, at least for decent people. I'm sure some people are going to go out and do things, but... Oh... Th- I mean, those 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 are the people that get bit first. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You get to be the part of the zombie horde. You you did not survive the first five minutes of the horror movie. Congratulations. Ugh. And also, you probably made somebody else sick, so you should feel bad before you die. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a little, you know. I know it's been seven. It's seven, been so many months. Seven months. grueling months of pandemic and here and we're both tired of being trapped. I I miss I miss the outside world. I miss being able to do stuff. Yeah, I miss friends. I miss doing things. I miss um lots of stuff. And apparently so did a lot of other people, and that's why they all went and did stuff. And then caused the biggest spike in American numbers since <sighs> August. So, yeah. See, yeah. I had been, I had been avoiding we're that. Trying to be positive. This is a positive. Yes, we're trying to be. We're trying to be chipper and <sighs> excited and spooky, like let's... and spooky. And but what? you know what? If there's one thing we are good at, it is being weird little creeps all year round. Yes, weird so creeps. Yeah. Weird little so, creeps. So, uh, I finally, re- I read the book that we talked about last week. <gasps> oh, you did? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so I read, so, hold on, very excited. So I read Hollow Places, the Hollow uh-huh. Places by Urs- Ursula Vernon using the, uh, the pseudonym T. Kingfisher. Yeah. Uh, it was very Mr. Ducky heavy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Anybody who has ever met Mr. Ducky... And knows that a character is about him in that book is going to instantly know exactly which character that is. There well, is. yeah, it's not even yeah, a little subtle. It's not subtle at oh, all. But it's, 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 it, he, uh, all right, it, it's still there's. Nice. I mean, there's differences. There's differences, and 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 it's and it is a delight uh, for a horror book. <laughs> yes. Like, oh. oh. I, oh, I feel like I should say this. Um, because several people <laughs> contacted me and was like, I, I don't normally like horror, but I do like Mr. Ducky stories. Should I read this book? Uh, and the book is very kind of folk horror, I would say. Yeah, yeah, it's more creepy. Yeah. I mean, there is definitely some some slight visceral imagery oh, in yeah. it, but but it's definitely not like... Um, it's, it's a it's a creeping dread kind of horror yeah. build instead of like Freddy is in your yeah I feel like underpants. it's more like ghost story, ghost yeah. creepy ghost story esque rather than like a uh, Clive Barker book of blood sort of right thing. Yeah, right it's yeah, not, yeah there's not a lot it's of not like, Hellraiser uh, the, the, <laughs> the Hellraiser doesn't jump the pain yes. cube is not involved yeah yeah I mean there's definitely some creepy imagery and i would totally have second thoughts about watching a movie version of it <laughs> maybe 
maybe because there is, are some images that that kind of stuck with me after reading that made me go, yeah, no, that's kind of out of my nightmares thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I I love a good kind of weird visceral image. So well, no, I, was, I mean, it was these good. Are, these are nice. I like, but again, I was also the person that after reading uh, her, he, Ursula's other horror book, the twisted ones thought that effigy sounded cute. Oh yeah. Well, so, the deer one, the deer yeah. effigy? You thought the deer oh, effigy? Yeah, the one, yeah, the one, the one that everybody hates. Oh. I went, he sounds cute, though. Oh, yeah, no. Oh. It, yeah, oh. kind of a little nightmare-y. Yeah, no, he's definitely nightmare but I decorate my living room with bones, so me, I can't... Me too, but... You know, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but, so if you do want a good scary, uh, you know... If you want a good scary read, but but that's not going to potentially yes, there's a little bit of har- body horror. There is some horror, and um, there's a little bit of like there's definitely some scares and some yeah. spooks and some there's, disturbing imagery. But yeah. um, there's definitely a couple moments where while I was reading it, I was hol- slightly holding my breath. I definitely put the book down yeah. a couple of places and yeah. had to like walk away and then come back to it. Yeah, but, um, but. But it's, it was good. Uh, like well, well, I already said last year week. It it's a good it's a good read. It's not uh like gross. It won't make you feel gross. Yeah. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Also, also, there's a lot of funny. Yeah, there's a lot of humor because in there. I don't I don't on honestly I don't think Ursula knows how to write not being funny. Uh, so I think that 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 also helps. A lot of times, where the creep factor is the, is building, there there then ends up being a good funny relief moment, and I think that's that's also what one of the reasons why I liked this liked it was because, like, as I was getting to a point of going, oh god, this is really tense. This is really tense. There usually would be something that that would make me would break it up a little bit. And then I'd be like, ha, 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 ducky. <laughs> It would be hard not to <laughs> imagine Ducky. I mean, I know, I know the character isn't actually supposed to be Ducky. No, it's, it's just, not. It's just kind of roughly based around him. But, but there was definitely a lot of parts where I was like, "Nope, totally can picture him doing this." And totally. Now that's the image that I got in my head. This is a conversation she heard in the cafe. One hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. There were definitely. Ducky's eyesight isn't that good. So that, yeah. that was the thing that took me out of the fiction. You know. Yeah. Where you went? Oh yeah. No. This yeah, is totally no, this is a different him. character. He, the main that character can see in the dark. <laughs> Ducky can. And he can run away. <laughs> <laughs> we have I, I long time listeners to the show will know that we have often joked that when the zombie apocalypse happened. We will sacrifice Mr. Ducky to the zombies because. Well, personally, I hope that he's that not gonna survive without any help. Well, yeah. Well, also personally, I hope that it causes a weird chain reaction and mm-hmm. it and it completely destroys the zombies because of all of his genetic oopsies. Foolery. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that they're like, wow, why did I eat that brain? There was oh, that was a bad brain. I that ate. was something not quite right with that. And then they all the zombies die, and then we, you know, we hold up D- Ducky as as our new lord and savior, and we yes. start a cult. Yeah, and and he was and he's fine with that. Yes, as long as the cult happens, <laughs> Mister right. Ducky is fine with it. <laughs> he's fine with us sacrificing him to the zombies as long as he gets to be. You know, the object of worship. Yeah, no, it's an agreement that we have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was interesting to read a horror novel where he survived. Yeah, you know? hey, yeah. That wasn't our plan, but okay. <laughs> cool. We're still flipping the spit. The, in the next, the spit. yeah, in the next book. Oh, he definitely dies. No, I don't so. know. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Who wants to write that book? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so if you, so... The Hollow Places, I highly recommend. Now that I have also read it. Yes, I'm, and I'm, I'm bad too. And I'm not going to read it. We also recommend it. It's, it's a perfect, it, I think that's like a perfect Halloween story. Oh, yeah. Super quick, fast read. Yeah, I read it in a day. Lots of spoops. 
but not you know yeah and it a, was a, like you're, you're not gonna have to like do it take a take a time life shower after you read it and like sit in the hot water and just contemplate yeah. what you've read yeah no there are plenty of other books for that yeah so this is like if you just want a little bit of a spook a little bit of a fun story some delightful characters there you go yeah so there that's i guess our book review we, we have now we are now doing book reviews on the show no please don't send me books <laughs> you can send me books i'm not gonna read them yeah i mean that's that's i have add it's hard enough for me to read any book I just, I'm not good with people giving me books to read for a review because then it feels like homework. And I don't, and I'm too old for homework. I'm not doing homework. I, I, I just, I, like, I, you've already attached a, a an assignment kind of quality to it, so it's automatically going to go, like, not get done with me. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that's partia- partially why I've never been good at doing reviews of any sort whether it's music or like no if i like it i like it and i will talk about it but i I gotta do it on my own at my own pace i can't do it i can't i can't be given it as an assignment yeah i also feel bad if i don't like something yes unless it was like really bad you know or bad in a delightful way all out the room i i just don't feel comfortable like crapping all over something somebody spent a lot of time doing yeah you know and, and, and not everything is for me so yeah yeah just because i didn't like it doesn't mean it's bad unless it's bad <laughs> you know i mean there was that <laughs> there was that vampire book that somebody dropped off at the cafe that i kind of wanted to read just so that i could crap all over it but i <laughs> but i but i couldn't do it no, because somebody spent a lot of time doing that, and, and we are creative people that spend a lot of time doing things. Well, we can't like. Well, and to be fair, you know, yeah. people probably crap all over this thing that we do, and I'm not. <laughs> Absolutely, somebody has definitely listened to this podcast and be like, "There's some ladies on it, and they talk too much. They talk too much, and they're just uh, and the yeah. music is weird. There's a lot of strange sounds. Yeah. I don't know why they like theremin so much. Yeah, yeah." So sounds like no, a Polish no, disco. No, no. I don't know. Like yeah. yeah, so and that's fine. It's not we just maybe. spent five minutes making non committal noises. Oh well, that's normal. <laughs> that seems about right. Use those <laughs> use those for your own amusement. Cut those Imagine out. Imagine that in your next iTunes review. Make <laughs> spent five minutes making non committal noises. Five stars. Perfect. Yes. All the way. <laughs> And with that, yes. I'm going to press a button. Do you suffer from the horrendous ailment of omnitism? Oh, it hurts everywhere. So many of us do, having never realized that there is a simple and easy cure. With the introduction of Dr. Phineas T. Norwood's patented omnitism oil, a healing antiseptic liniment, you can be free from crippling omnitism. This amazing new oil can be used both internally and externally, but is best when used in combination. Headache? Phineas can cure that. Gut rot? Phineas can cure that. Bunions? Eye strain? Toothaches? Phineas can cure all of that. Generalized, non-specific pain? Phineas can cure that too. Right away on a cloud of happiness using Dr. Phineas T. Norwood's patented omnitism oil. Dr. Phineas T. Norwood's patented omnitism oil, a healing antiseptic liniment. I was just telling Lady Addercop that that the crossover in trying to find Halloween coffee themed memes for the cafe's Twitter feed is very difficult mostly because a lot of them are clown themed i had no idea that this is a crossover that existed yeah well because i think it's partially because of like it okay and then just creep and then clowns are just creepy and terrifying to a lot of people and and there's also just in general memes are 
there's a lot of bad memes yeah. out there. And yeah. and so you gotta really go through and find the the good ones. Yeah, and, you have to, you have to curtail your meme. Experience. Yeah, and so when you're looking for something as specific as like spooky coffee memes or Halloween coffee memes or whatever things, it mm-hmm. it gets a little, you know, it gets a little tricky. Get down in the weeds a bit. Yeah, and and so there has been a bunch of clown <laughs> ones, and I know that if I post those. Mr. Ducky is going to lose his shit and be so mad at me. <laughs> and so I don't. But there's every morning, there's at least two of them that I see that I'm like, oh, these would be so good. And I'm going to. Mm. But I don't want him to quit. Because <laughs> you've been posting clown memes. Or yell at me. <laughs> Because I don't. Right, so there is, I feel like there is some backstory that is needed for our listeners. Oh no, so creepy. last week, last week we talked about, you told the story about Christy Rainbow. Did I tell Christy Rainbow? Yes, story? you did, Miss okay, ADD. Okay. All right, so they know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, last, but, yeah. but Miss Christy, yeah, Christy Rainbow, the the clown the from the, from, from, Rainbow, from yeah. Ducky's horrible childhood story I, last week. Uh, is the reason, yeah, the reason why he's got? Yeah, it's the reason why. Going to be the clown, the clown work cabaret now. Yeah, no, I don't know. I'm not really crazy about clowns either. I got actually had a slight phobia and fear of them until I had to dress up as one, and then once you're, once you have donned the, the makeup, the, the red squeaky nose. Yes, then that, and you have thus become the clown yourself. Uh. <laughs> It it stops being terrifying. However, other people still find you terrifying. And well, and... Mr. Ducky did work as a clown. Yes, and yeah. does still find clowns terrifying. So. Yeah. Well, I had to dress. There's some theory. Yeah, I had to but dress. I think that's because some clowns are crazy people. Yeah. Yeah. I no. mean, and I say that as an aging goth who yeah. was in theater and an art student. Yeah. No, no judgment. Just... But clowns, y'all know you've got some crazy people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like costumed characters. Y'all I've al- know some of y'all are crazy. I've also done that. So have I. Oh, hey. Hey. Holla. Oh. If you've ever had to do any costume characters or mascot stuff, that's fun. No, it's not no, fun. it's terrible. It's the worst. It's very sweaty. It's very, very sweaty. uncomfortable. And people really want to find out your gender if you are yep. a gendered character. Yup. In I had... a way that is includes trying to grope you. Yeah. Adults. These are the adults. The children take you at face value and try oh, to no, not, or... not necessarily. I had a child uh punch me in the groin area because they thought I was a boy. I didn't know because I was children try to grope. Well, because I was I w- well he punched me. I was dressed as Brother Berenstein Bear. And he punched punched me in the crotch. An unresolved ish beef with bearing with brother bear. I don't know. I don't know. I think there was. He asked me if I was a boy. I said no. He apparently didn't. I don't know if it was that in disbelief or that just aggression or whatever. But he then punched me in the crotch. Unchecked child rage. Yes, he was, was. He was eight, so it didn't. And with and I was wearing a big giant brother Berenstein suit, so it did nothing. Yeah. But there was a moment where I had to hold back the thing that I wanted to say out loud to that <laughs> child, which was pretty much like "fuck you, kid." <laughs> but. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't want to unleash a fucky you little shits at least once during a costume character. Yeah, then it's uh, just not a, you just haven't done it right. You haven't done it enough. I I was the ham burglar. Oh, fun. Oh, you were a McDonald's one. Yes, I spent it because I worked in a McDonald's at the time. I think it was 16-ish, around there. Uh, and... Oh yeah. Well, at least yeah. you were a teenager. I was. I was tw- in my twenties. I I, I, <laughs> it's not much I better. Only, I only lived the mascot lifestyle for a short brief period. Thank God. But I the okay. So a thing you might not 
understand about uh I, I mean uh, uh hamburger clowns there that that I'm, I'm like how can i say this so that we don't get sued right um the thing you might not understand about the fun yellow and red hamburger clowns is that they have like regions like oh. mob bosses oh so there's a person that makes all of the appearances as that particular hamburger clown and they have a a regional concentration okay so that makes sense okay any appearances by the hamburger clown in those regional concentrations are that one person and our uh and i worked with our regional hamburger clown for a little bit um i will not mention his name because i feel like this is litigious somehow. oh yes yeah probably but he did at one point work as a folk musician oh and then went into hamburger clowning oh and it got real weird real fast of course <laughs> not surprising <laughs> not surprising at all I, w- I don't i don't have the money to defend myself against a, a hamburger club lawsuit so i'm trying to be like vague <laughs> but i worked as his hamburglar for a while and the hamburglar at the time involved a, a large rubber head and a cape and a hamburglar man suit and i had cookies stashed in secret pockets in my cape so that i could give the kids cookies um, which just resulted in the kids trying to distract me and rob me at every. Oh, at so every you were hamburgled. <laughs> yeah, like one kid would try to distract me and the other ones would try to fucking pick my pockets. Like it was like they were all of a twist up, you know, like it's a hot back line for us. <laughs> so, you know, as, they, just as they pickpocketed your. Enemies. Oh, it was like a, maybe it was, maybe it was training. Yeah, it was really weird, and it was bad training because the head was did not have a lot of visibility. There were just tiny eye holes. Well, I mean, this... not for you. I mean, training for them. <laughs> yeah, but like that's not a normal human would have more peripheral vision. Yes, than I that have. is true. Oh um, gosh, yeah. No, I remember the, wearing those all stupid of the helmets. Adults of the children, like some kids, really liked the costume. Some kids really hated the costume. Some kids wanted to get one over on the costume. Uh, but they all kind of generally treated it like its own entity. Uh, the adults on the other hand became obsessed with finding out whether the person in the hamburger costume ident- how the person in the hamburger costume identified what their genitals were. It was very weird. I got groped a lot. It was not a good time. Oh, uh, what's uh, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's when I parted ways with the hamburger clown because I'm like, I just don't want grown men. It was, and it was all, well, no, not all you. men, but definitely these guys. Yeah. I just was tired of grown men trying to find out if they wanted to fuck the person, the teenager in the hamburger costume. Yeah. Like, that's what it boils down to. Yes. Do you they have... were like, they didn't know what I looked like, and they thought maybe they might want to fuck me. And like, that involved all sorts of boundary like, crossing behaviors that I was not a fan of. Like, oh, do all of you people have weird fetishes about the hamburger? Like, yeah, there's a certain subset of people that a person puts a mask on and they just get real weird and fucky and it's just not... Yeah, no. Hey, if everybody's in a consenting adult, that's 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 all cool for school. But like, don't grope... Don't grope the hamburger clown's robber friend. Oh, well, so when... Don't I... grope the barely teenage boy that's working as... as the Easter money? Yeah, I also yeah. worked as a costume character and also got croaked by horny oh, mouths. Yeah. No, thankfully you know, I it's, it's not a gendered thing. Yeah, no. Thankfully I worked in a uh large chain books corporate bookstore. Hamburger clown bookstore. Uh-huh. Yeah, hamburger clown bookstore that uh had a children's section that would have uh readings and things would have a story time and occasionally they would have cartoon characters. I did not sign up to be one of the one of the costume characters. I want to point this out. This was not <laughs> oh, no, that so, makes it so much worse. Yes. This was I not volunteered for my penance. Right. I did not volunteer for this. I would be in the cafe innocently making drinks for people. And someone in management would come forward and find me and go. Your first mistake. And go. Physically visible. Yes. And go, Emmett, 
are you uh, va- are you free right now? And I'd be like, I'm making someone a cappuccino, so no. No, absolutely not. Well, it's not super busy in here. When you're done, can you uh, come see me back in the office? And I'd be like, oh, okay. Uh, this doesn't bode well, but all right. <laughs> and I would finish up what I was doing, say goodbye to my crew crew in the cafe, and then head back to the office wondering, am I about to get yelled at? Or am I going to win a prize? It's never and, a prize. And let me just say, it was neither. So, the prize is capitalism and it yeah. sucks. Yes. So I would I would end up going into the back and then they would say, oh, yes. Oh, good. You're here. Come with me. And then we would walk into the receiving loading dock area and they would go, here. And then suddenly they would hand me a bag like a clothing bag thing, and go, here, try this on and see if this fits. And I would go, wait, what? Yeah, well, the person who volunteered, uh, it didn't fit. And I'd be like, what is going or on? Or they suddenly realized they didn't want to be groped by a horny no, well, for an hour. Well, it was so, occasionally it was because they were way taller and the mm. costume was for a smaller person because teenagers it was made for teenagers because that's who deserves to get punished like this <laughs> and it's, they call that like you know they call that uh and if um, yeah no it's terrible a learning experience capitalism is what they call that uh <laughs> you're we can we can abuse you the maximum amount right. and pay you the absolute least right we are paying you at most eight dollars an hour Go put this on. I'm and I'm saying at most, because uh, it was the nineties, yeah. um, and so yeah. So I would go. Oh, oh, okay, sure. I'm supposed to be like running the cafe, but this seems like a really good use of my time. And I would <laughs> open the bag, and sure enough, there would be Brother Berenstein Bear or. Uh, what was it? Uh, um, there was like Miss Spider and Angelina Ballerina. It was a whole bunch of different children's book characters who I normally would be be just joyed to see because oh, these books are great. Oh, but when you're the one who's about to be forced into that costume because you're mm-hmm. the only person who is five two. <laughs> In the whole place on a Saturday afternoon, suddenly it becomes not as much fun. No, and those things are not like the the professional costumed mascots have. You know, like cooling packs. Yeah, and fans, fans. and yeah, and like cosplayers. Cosplayers have better costumes. Oh, one hundred percent. Like cosplayers think about the fact that I'm about to be in this costume for twelve hours. Our I'm in suit manufacturers got you covered. Yeah. This was not that, kids. No. This was felt and rubber and our misery. carpeting. It felt like carpeting. It was I terrible. Did, I didn't wear mine outside. I thankfully did not, but it was I I can't, I don't even know how long I had to do it for because my bl- mind went blank. <laughs> yeah, you just got to shut down after a while and just try to survive. I think I was only doing it for like an hour or two, but it was long enough. Well, was definitely it, long enough. It was long enough that that several hours of my life have disappeared from me. I I have talked to more th- this is not a Halloween subject, but yes. it's, it's no it's, costumes. It's, it's costumes. We're wearing costumes. Uh, I have talked to more than one person who has who has worked as a costumed mascot uh, in the past, I... and they either have one of two experiences. They have kind of the same experiences we are describing, right. where it was hot and miserable, and kids tried to rob you, and parents tried to grip you, uh, or they loved it. Yeah. There doesn't seem to be a median costumed. No, no there's uh, no middle ground. It's like either you were taken advantage of and horribly abused, or you had the greatest experience of your life. 
And and they continue to do it now. Yeah. Or or they wish yeah. they could do it. Or they look back on it fondly. Yes. Yeah. No, it's no, we true. Want, we we didn't have that experience. No. Yeah, I, uh, it did not last long as the, the hamburger the hamburger clown's uh, uh, yeah. felonious mouse sidekick. I, I quit. did a couple of things and then I quit. Yeah, no, I quit my I quit that I quit that corporate coffee job. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I still worked for the hamburger clown chain. I just didn't do the costume. I would prefer to get screamed at in the drive through for eight hours a day rather than do that. I I I had a scorched earth exit from that job. I do not blame you. I I actually even wrote that one of the reasons why I was leaving that job was because of those costumes. <laughs> I can still see the dead my, cold eyes of Brother I was staring into my soul. I was, I was disrespected by the fact that I was forced to wear this costume that I never actually wanted to wear. I didn't volunteer for this. I was dragged out of my nice coffee shop cafe job to do this embarrassing terrible thing where I was mistreated and uh, misaligned and groped and asked if I was a boy constantly propositioned. yes propositioned punched uh, De- <laughs> like, defo propositioned defo punched defo robbed there was definitely some really inappropriate <laughs> things said to me when I was Miss Spider that I don't remember anymore but i was definitely shocked and appalled at the time oh, poor Mr. Was... Ducky was dressed up as the easter bunny and got like full on molested yes the yeah no there was there was enough things that oh, that was terrible. a good reason why i never to do it again so so what we're saying it kids <laughs> not that any children actually listen to this show um next time you see a costumed individual anywhere at an event mascot whatever anytime you see one of those just smile and nod be nice to them and leave them alone they're having a day (laughs) they will appreciate that far more than anything else you could possibly do unless you're a random clown that hits on me I feel like I should be able. This open season is declared. Oh, okay. I was about to go. Wait, where is the when? What creepy ass direction is this going? Oh no, no, no. I thought was one of the (laughs) got got hit on by a clown at a circus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was younger. Oh well. Yeah, that's I. Well, well, I attract a type. I guess. (laughs) Apparently, that type is clown. They just, no, they just see it was a big it was Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bailey. It was a big circus. They just see you and they think she's a she's a woman that appreciates John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> I I had on a Darth Vader shirt. I guess apparently that was the Was it your Who's Your Daddy shirt? No! No, it was not sexual in the slightest! <laughs> I was gonna it's just a random little kid's Darth Vader shirt that had a big plaster Darth Vader head on it. Is it Vader? Oh, but Apparently it probably that was like a siren call. Well, yeah. To one particular clown <laughs> who just kept coming over, trying to <laughs> chat me up while in makeup. I should mad. He was, you know, working. And I guess that's better than like getting chatted up while at work. Because yeah. at least if you're working, you have the option to leave. Right. You, yeah. <sighs> it, was, it wasn't like no, you were it was, chatting it was, it was up the clown. Day. It wasn't like you were chatting up the clown while he's trying to work. No, I was, mean... I was like, trying to ignore the clown. But he wanted to have a conversation about my Darth, my plastic Darth Vader shirt while I was there with my fam, my, my siblings. I was taking my siblings to the circus. And of course, they didn't give a shit about the circus. All they wanted to talk about was the clown that was hitting on me. Mm. Like Nicole, you can go... <laughs> Are you going to go out with him? Are you going to go out with the clown? What's Ducky going to say? Are you going to dump Ducky for a different clown? Why do you attract <laughs> clowns? Why do clowns love you? Is it because you were at the Hamburglar for a while? What, what, what's up with you and clowns? 
it's a little thing. I don't have a clown thing. But apparently you do because uh, two out of two guys I've seen flirt with you have been clowns. Because Other have, people have flirted with me that are non-clowns. It's because you have red hair. They think you're Ronald I've Mc, never seen it. They think you're Ronald I McDonald. Red hair, I have a tiny nose. Looks like it would take grease paint real yeah. well. You know, I understand. I'm I'm like clown nip. Yep. They th- Irresistible. You're when Wendy and uh Ronald McDonald <laughs> had a Wendy had a love Ronald child. Had an illegitimate baby. Here I am. Also, they why does every it. why does all fast food have people with red hair? Because we are the mute the 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 sad pathetic mutants of the human race who deserve to live on the sketchy side with side alleys of of life. Oh. <laughs> And the quarantine might be getting to me a little bit. I was just thinking maybe it was a color choice, color palette thing. Well, like, no, it's actually because red <laughs> and yellow and orange stimulate uh, or, or supposedly stimulate your appetite. So that's why a lot of the fast food places have those colors repeat because uh, they're trying to make you hungry to gorge yourself full of um, gross food. Yeah, you just gorge yourself full of, you know, garbage. And. <laughs> And they all have clown mascots because they secretly are all trying to get me to work for them. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm tired and starting to lose the thread. That's fine. And, you know, it's pandemic time and it's just it's weird. Pandemic time. Everything is just weird. All right. With that, I don't know. Oh, I feel like I'm going to end up making a clown playlist and Mr. Ducky is not going to be happy about this. Well, you know, Nightmare Circus is a is a an appropriate Halloween theme. Yeah, it is true. So, all right, Nightmare Circus, that's what we're going with. So, uh you when this episode posts, you can then go to our mixcloud.com backslash that darling DJ duo and listen to the playlist, which will probably be Nightmare Clowns because because yeah, uh, yeah. that apparently is where we're going with this. Oh, hey, and like <laughs> piggybacking off of that, if you're looking for another like kind of good spooky, good book to read that this is start- circus themed, like just kind of try-, try to tie the whole episode together. Uh, the Night Circus is a very good book. Oh, cool. I really enjoyed that one. It's, uh, yeah, no, I, look it up. It's a good book. I read it. I, I devoured it in about two days. Excellent. I haven't read her follow-up novel, but uh, I am looking forward to it. And uh, uh, yeah. I think that with... And if you like this thing, we do. Yes, this Clockwork of Cabarets. You can follow us on social media. You can donate via PayPal, Patreon, Coffee. Um, all you have to do is go to our website, agonyauntstudios.com, and everything is there. All of the information. It's very convenient. And with yeah, that... If you, if you would like to follow Emmett, she's at Emmett Davenport. I am at Lady Edderkop. Yeah. You can rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. We and also have it. A- give us five stars so that people can find us and enjoy clown nightmare banter i guess so and uh we also have instagram and all that Uh, stuff because sure why not (laughs) because we live in a capitalist hellscape and we have to all monetize our free time in an attempt to just kind of scrape some kind of living out of this hell we are all experiencing (laughs) or again maybe that's just me yeah. That could just be the pandemic talking once again. It might be. And with that, this has been the Clockwork Cabaret. She is Lady Edercop. And she is Emmett Davenport. And it's not work we do. It's clowns. Dear gentlemen and sirs, you know the call to action. Surely you've noticed in your careers as gentlemen adventurers that for all our sublunary escapades, we often suffer from what has heretofore been an unmentionable ailment. Well, suffer no longer. With the advent of Sir Thomas Buxhill Wentworth's mentholated monocle balm, you'll be rid of the uncomfortable chafing and dryness that accompanies the life of a monocle wearer. Gone is the shame of a wind-chapped eye, swollen shut in pain. No longer will your unmonocled eye weep with discomfort. Oh, my eye! But rather with pleasure and pure mentholated joy, oh. I urge you, the gentleman adventurer, to purchase this helpful product immediately. 